The cross-section of civil society and women organizations have been highlighting what they call the obvious injustice perpetrated at the National Assembly last week when lawmakers failed or refused to allow a number of gender-based provisions up for consideration during the Constitution Amendment session see the light of day. In fact, a stream of women groups have been holding daily protests at the National Assembly Annex since Wednesday of last week. Female lawmakers in both chambers of parliament have not been left out in the sustained expression of angst with the country now set for general election next week, next year. Where does the state of affairs leave the much talked about 35% of all elective and appointive positions for Nigerian women as was rigorously promoted by the last administration? Well, joining us now to have a discussion around this matter is Mary Ikoku, a communications and political strategist and development analyst. Good morning and welcome to the morning show, Mary. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, OJ. Well, all right. Well, from time immemorial, women have, be, have continued to fight for the protection of their rights. Now, of the 68 bills proposed for amending different provisions of uh, the 1999 Constitution, five were directly related to gender equality. I'd love your analysis on the overall implication of the rejection of these gender equality-related constitutional amendments. As you know, many women have accused lawmakers of wanting to legitimize gender inequality. Hello, Mary. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. Did you, did you hear my question, or would you like me to repeat the question? Please do so. All right. I was talking about the women. I didn't get the question. Yes. They, I was talking about how women have continued to fight for the protection of their rights. And, you know, of the 68 bills proposed for amending different provisions of the uh, Constitution, five were directly related to gender equality. And I was talking about your analysis. I would love your analysis on the overall implication of the rejection of these gender equality related constitutional amendments. Because you know, many women have accused lawmakers of wanting to legitimize gender inequality. Uh, absolutely. So what that uh, what uh, the National Assembly have done is um, an affront on the Nigerian women. And on that March 1st that they took this decision to reject all the gender-related uh, bills, what the implication for some of us, for a lot of us women, is that they do not have, they do not understand the CEDAW laws, uh, uh, treaties that the Nigerian government also went to, 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 to sign. So you go and sign these treaties and you don't come back here and behave anyhow. And uh, everyone, I think, both men and women, were shocked. And um, it's, it's a sad day for Nigerian women because it does appear, it's not that it does appear, that is much first will go down in history as the day that the men at the National Assembly of Nigeria decided to legalize gender inequality. In the past, you can say, oh, there's gender inequality, but now they've put a stamp on it that you don't, um, you, you, you are not relevant, basically. That's what they're telling women. And you look at what women are asking for in these bills. Oh, so for so many years, women would have to go negotiating for, you know, what should ordinarily be given, things that should be given, right? So you, you, you now look at the bills that were before this National Assembly. One of those bills, uh, I, I think we looked at um, Amend Section 48, uh, 49, and 47 of the Constitution, uh, uh, 49 and 71 of the Constitution to create a total of 111 additional seats for women. You know, that's to get in women representation in the parliament, across the senatorial districts, and constitutions, constituencies at, you know, at national and state House of Assembly level. Look at, I'm someone who is coming from a state with no single woman in its House of Assembly. And what that means is that in that state, even when I had a research to conduct in the state, 
the person who was in charge of the violence against women's bill uh, a committee in the state is a man I had to be having conversation with, discussing violence against a woman. You see the challenge, why you need to have that representation. But this man said, this National Assembly said no to that bill. And the other bill was to amend section 223 of the Constitution to ensure that women occupy at least 35% in political uh, party administration and appointed positions. You saw how that one went as well. And then it's not just about how they reject this bill. It's also that impunity with which they did what they did. You could hear them roaring. No, no, no. What was that about? It is insane for us to witness such in this Ninth Assembly. Ninth Assembly, if they don't fix what they've done, it will go down in history of this country as the worst assembly in Nigeria. And then there was also about amending the Section 147 and Section 192 of the Constitution. And what that is about, that, uh, uh, um, the, that section is about minimum of 20%, House of Rep, 10%, Senate. How can this be? How? You know? And then we said amend Section 31 and Section 318 to allow women become an indigent of her husband's state after at least five years of marriage. Do you listen to this kind of conversation? So today, the constitution we have, as it's currently constituted, does not spe specify indigenship, who is an indigenous of a place, when it comes to women of this country. So we're saying, if a woman is married from, say, uh, a woman from Imo State is married to a man from Lagos State, that woman should, that bill is seeking that, that woman should be able to, after five years of that marriage, should be able to earn indigenship, become an indigenous of that place, should be able to run for office there, should be able to gain political appointment representing Lagos State. And not, when that time comes, they tell her, go back to your state, you are not from here. Now, women in this country are stateless. And it's shocking that this National Assembly will reject such a bill. And the other one, which is also quite intriguing, is where you're asking the National Assembly, allow foreign men who are married to Nigerian women. That is the, the, the bill on citizenship, of Ni Nigerian citizenship, for spouses of Nigerian women who are foreigners. So a foreigner gets married to a Nigerian woman. He cannot, and he comes here, loves Nigeria, decides to establish and live here with his family. And this constitution says he cannot access Nigerian citizenship. That is cruel. And then, the same constitution is saying any man, Nigerian man, who is married to a foreign woman, any foreign woman that is married to a Nigerian man, receives automatic citizenship. My sister, how in the world can a constitution be discriminatory against its own self? This is one country where what the National Assembly has done is to tell us that the rules for women are different from the rules of the men. And you can see the high level cultural uh, uh, malpractices that is, is, is showing forth here. And then the, 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 the extreme misogynism, patriarchy, and sexism. I don't know how else to describe what happened on the 1st of March. And why they always choose significant days in the lives of women globally to strike at Nigerian women still beats my imagination. All right, Mary, um, let's look at this situation. In spite of the repetitive nature of the outcomes that we've seen from this entire process, it's also very important to know that some of the lawmakers that initially um, did vote yes came back to vote no at some point. What do we extract from this kind of such a scenario? And what does this indicate for the future of um, future um, proceedings around this? Okay, that issue of voting yes and then turning around to vote no. Um, I, I can't just know what to make of it, that. But I feel that um, what could have happened 
is that uh, a lot of them are not very literate in terms of understanding. Um, they're a bit ignorant of the bills. Because if you looked at how the speaker had to literally take those bills one after the other and explaining the, 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 the meat of it, if you, know, if, you, if you notice that. So it does appear that a lot of them also didn't even understand how, what they voted against. Because um, you say yes in one breath, and in fact, you have the, the one of 20%, one house is saying 20% approved, and the other one says 10%. So right now, out of the five, we have nothing, because even the 10, when the lower house has 10 and the upper house has 20, the, you ha there's no concurrence, so <laughs> we have nothing. And it is important that they understand the need for them to go back, bring back, recall those bills, and reconsider them. And reconsider them. Because it's not just about that it's issue of women or gender. It's actually about the development of Nigeria. So this is a country <laughs> with women making up more than 50% of its population. So what you're saying, I would liken Nigeria to a country so a human being with two eyes, two hands, two legs, but he chooses to make use of one eye, one hand, and one leg. Is that not chaos? It's a very pitiable situation. So you can see how Nigeria is dwindling. You can see how the country is losing focus. Because even in, in the home, you can see who redirects things. When the man is losing focus, there's a, a, a woman there, a partner, who redirects him, gets senses into him. So this country is running on one leg and is not doing well. And Nigerian women are saying, bring back those bills. Reconsider those bills for the future of the next generation of women and for the development of our country. Because Nigeria as it is today continues to lose so much economically socially, and in any how you look at it, because of their, this gender inequality, you can't live in an unequal world and expect things to go right. You need to have a true democracy, and there is no democracy in such a democracy that excludes a group of people that make up more than 50% of your population. I want to believe that even Nigerian men, I see a lot of men are angry. It's not just the women that are upset about what happened on March 1st. A lot of men that are in my, in my corner are very upset and they're wondering how could that have happened? And it is so funny that the spokesman of the House of Representatives had the temerity to go on national television to say and spew that women did not lobby enough. In case he's not aware, women did lobby enough. Women, despite all our lobbying, all our back-end consultations, are you aware that we, women, the UN women donated consultants who are experienced in gender mainstreaming to this National Assembly? They worked tirelessly designing these laws and making those amendments using the appropriate international laws to back up everything that they did. And they've worked consistently for months, more than a year, for as long as this amendment, uh, constitutional amendment was on. Nigerian women trooped out when it was time for public hearing. Women were all over the country, the six geopolitical zones. I made presentation in one of those uh, in the Southeast. People made presentations. In fact, at the public hearings across the six geopolitical zones, the women gender bills were the most cohesive, the most articulated, and they were very organized at the public hearings. Anyone at those public hearings could tell you that. And beyond that, we had uh, Governor's Wives Forum. We're all reaching out. Some of them were writing letters to their representatives, to the senators from their states. And in fact, we know senators that voted yes. Many of them who had, uh, who their first ladies wrote to and reached out to, lobbied to, they vote after they voted, they took a screenshot of their votes and they sent to their, their, their governors. So we, we did lobby. Anyone that says we didn't do that lobby 
is just uh, that is a deliberate um, deliberate mischief because I tell you what the man uh, Ben Carlo, the spokesman of the House of Reps, is actually from Abia North, my own constituency. And he says his people did not agree to that bill. Do I look like someone who didn't want that bill? He's representing my... It's, it's crazy that they also have to lie to make their points. To say that women didn't lobby them is crazy. Why should women, even, even though lobby did go on, what you are expecting... I don't know the kind of lobbying they want. Perhaps with all that we've done, if, if in, the, in the event they're looking for Ghana must go, or could they be looking for, or I don't know what women could have done. Would, or maybe perhaps we could have actually uh, sourced for dollars and pay for all expense trip for them to go to our CSW at uh, New York. Uh, so they can <laughs> listen more about CEDAW and all these uh, treaties that, <laughs> that, that they can utilize to make the right laws. Uh, a more inclusive law uh, for 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 the nation, you know you know what I mean. So it is it's, it's it's unbelievable. So and if this is what they are waiting for, then Nigeria is finished. I'm sorry. We should all be worried. We should all be really concerned. It would be worrisome if that is the kind of lobbying that these men wanted us to do. But in all of this, I personally just see a lot of patriarchy in it. And I always tell people that patriarchy is not a man. Patriarchy is a system. And a lot of these people are born into the system. And even when a woman can support the patriarchal system, and in the same way you can see men support feminism. That's why you can see a lot of men who are real men are standing up. Look at Governor Wiki and the other, other governors that are you know, calling, calling out, the, the, the condemning their action. You know? So if if even their fellow men deemed it fit to speak out, then it should be so, a, a matter for them to really think seriously about what has happened and with a view to bringing back those bills and for reconsideration and doing things right. All five of them, not leaving anyone at all. All right, Mary, um, I can assure... That's the right thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, I can assure you that real men, even in the media are standing up, you know, for this advocacy and, and that, you know, the bill should be represented. Uh, but, but then I, I think I will need your clarification, especially for the benefit of viewers. You know, when you say that um, uh, the way things stand now, uh, that women appear to be stateless, uh, I'm not so sure uh, how appropriate that is because um, rejecting the, the bill that will have made uh, a wife after four year, five years of marriage, an indigen of the state where her husband is from, um, doesn't make her, doesn't remove her own indigenship of the state where she was born. And my point is, if that is correct, maybe it will be nice to push the sort of a liberal outlook that Lagos State, as an example, you know, has projected over the years. You do not even need to necessarily be an indigen uh, whether as a man or as a woman, uh, before you can run for office or before you can be invited, you know, to serve uh, in certain capacities, especially if you're a taxpaying um, citizen in that state. Uh, indigenship is of less importance in terms of how you serve the state, uh, where you are paying your tax and where you live, where you are uh, doing so many things. So I thought that maybe it will be important to clarify that. But beyond that, uh, I'm wondering, uh, what would be your assessment in terms of the fact that with uh, the first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, and the wife of the vice president also being part of the lobby, yet we have uh, some fellows saying that, you know, you didn't lobby enough. We also do not know the sort of lobbying uh, that, they, that they would have preferred. Uh, but then do you think that this takes us back uh, to that... Um, uh, insensitive sort of thinking uh, that uh, women belong in the other room or in the kitchen because this is what it looks like. And then more importantly, and now that women are coming out to, to protest against the rejection of these bills, will you go beyond protest 
and then begin to name and shame those who actually voted no against those bills? Will that be part of the agenda moving forward? Um, absolutely. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I think that um, when we've, we're, our coalition has already um, sent in a letter to the National Assembly. We had written to the CNA. We had written to the Speaker. We've written, we, we're pursuing this from every, uh, we're getting in all approach to, to it. And um, we've asked for um, we've asked for a detailed, a detailed um, um, report of how the voting was done. We want to know the voting pattern. We want to know how every member of the National Assembly voted. And why we want to do this is because we need to call out those who voted against the, women, the gender bill. And why this is important for us also is that we would like to use those um, feedback in preparation for 2023 election or any election before 2023. Because over the years, you can tell me that you can, you can, be, uh, you can not realize that women have been voting men into power. And you can also understand that women by what has happened, if we get all these records, we hope that before Wednesday that could come. And uh, we would name and shame every one of them on the list. And it's also a wrong narrative when people begin to say, we are certain it's people from certain part of the country that voted no. You will be shocked. And that's why the National Assembly really needs to quickly release those uh, uh, details because People naturally just feel, oh, people from the South would support the bill. But you will be shocked that it's not correct. There will be some people from the South, like the, the young man from my, my senatorial district who, is, who said that uh, uh, members of his own constituents did not uh, uh, agree with the bill. He will come back to Abia State in 2023 and is uh, representing uh, Ben, the local government. Bend the uh, Isukwato constituency. We'll be waiting. Bend constituency. 2023 is not far from now. Women will mobilize. We will turn our numbers to resources, election winning resources, and we will vote them out. This is when people will understand why my organization, Emerge Women, congratulated and commended. President Muhammad Buhari, because we do understand the implication of his assenting to that electoral bill. It really puts, uh, is it icing on the cake for us because with the amendment, with the electoral bill now, all these men that carried ballot to enter the National Assembly, with this bill, thanks to President Muhammad Buhari, has signed. You won't carry ballot box to enter National Assembly. Nigerian women will send you to National Assembly or retire you permanently come 2023. Well, Another uh, thing we are going to do is that <laughs> the other thing we are also working at is that every one of them will hear from us. We are not backing down. Any day they sit in that assembly, Nigeria women will sit. The next sitting, we will sit in two chambers, <laughs> both in. We will have Senate. We will have House of Reps. We will sit. Two chambers will be sitting. Since last week, we've been sitting in only one chamber. Now, going forward, we'll be sitting in two chambers. You will hear from the House of Reps. We will hear from. And they are all made up of women. We will make laws. We will say nays. We will say hi. Hey, the eyes will have it. <laughs> because the nays would have retired all of them. I am very <laughs> impressed by your confidence that <laughs> women are going to mobilize. Let, let's quickly talk about affirmative action, the bill which was seeking to amend the uh, section uh, 223 of the uh, Constitution. That is to provide 35% affirmative action to ensure women occupy at least 35% in uh, political party administration and appointed positions across federal and state levels. Now, I mean, in two 
2022, many have said that we should be talking about 50%, or 50% should have already been implemented as is done in many countries. It's understood that even some lawmakers suggested 15%. Now, what would you say? Are you, are you advocating for 50% of uh, you know, women to uh, take over elective positions? I mean, 50% of women constitutes the population at this point. I, <laughs> of course, the right thing to ask for, I mean, we can ask for 50%. I will endorse the 50% any day. Um, but you see, it's also very necessary that uh, you, you walk before you run. You crawl before you walk, and then you walk before you run. I don't have a problem with 35%. In a patriarchal system like ours, uh, 35 percent is even scary for the men, and then 50 percent will give them hypertension. <laughs> but at what they've done on the first, we really don't care anymore. If we get 80 percent, it's well and good. If our mobilization can get all of them out, it is still democracy because that is the kind of democracy that they understand. But um, they're, they're coming back to that question, I think, um, in, in policy decision making or even legal work framing, all you need to form a critical mass in policy decision making is 30%. So um, the problem we have, if we had 30%, 35% in that uh, National Assembly, believe you me, I do not uh, foresee that uh, these five bills would have gone the way it did. But because we have even less than 10%, nothing moves. They are already a defeated uh, group from day one. And that's why we need to have more women in the parliament in the, in, in, and in, our, uh, in the executive and uh, across uh, leadership uh, uh, positions. And again, um, one, one thing that is also very clear here is that Women are going to are not going to be bothered anymore about 35 percent. And why we ask for 35 percent is because it's uh, the Maputo and the, even the all the treaties that we've signed, even the Benjamin, which Nigeria as a nation was part went there to sign. You to go there, sign, take photo ops, take, get your Esther code, then you come back, you trash it, and then continue living your life as a, a village man or a very uh, I say I'm a traditional man. What the heck? is a, being a traditional man. It is a very, you know, jargons that they use to continue to permit um, a, 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 a indecent uh, traditional uh, attitudes against, that impedes the progress uh, of Nigerian women. So I would also back 50%. And why not? Right. Really, yeah. Why not? Why can't we have uh, 50%? Why, right. why not? not? That's right. a big question, right? Uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning to share those very cogent views with us. If you're just joining us or you uh, joined us midway, we've been talking to Mary Ikoko, who is a development analyst.